Welcome to another episode of Space Flight Scotland. I'm Dave, and today we're going to be talking about two exciting Scottish rocket companies and compare the two of them. If you've been following the channel for a while, or just the UK space industry in general, you'll no doubt have an idea of which two companies I'm going to talk about. And they are, of course, Skyrora and Orbex. I'll compare each company, the rockets, launch location, and what makes each one so special. I'll also give my own opinion of each company and if I think they will really launch in 2022. Before we get started though, please remember to subscribe and like this video so that I can help my channel grow and I can get more unique content to you from the Scottish space industry. We're going to start with Orbex and looking at their own website, they state since 2015, we have raised over £38 million in public and private funding and worked with the support of several EU governments and key partners to ensure the best launch vehicle and launch site options. Okay, so they're a serious contender. And they have some good backing behind them, but surely they need experience of actually building the rockets themselves. Well, Orbex have that covered already. Their website also says that Orbex staff members have professional backgrounds with NASA, ESA and several other commercial spaceflight organisations. Equipment developed by Orbex team members has flown on more than 50 deep space missions and collectively they have developed more than 50 rocket engines and a wide range of orbital and suborbital launch vehicles including ATV, Ariane 5 and Ariane 6. Unlike Skyrora, Orbex are only developing one type of rocket that we know of anyway. They might have something hidden in their vaults. But obviously they have their eyes on a particular type of mission for now. The rocket also has, in my opinion, one of the coolest names in the space industry. This is the Orbex Prime rocket. I don't know if it's just me, but Prime gives me Rocket Lab vibes. The carbon fibre, the black colour, it just screams cool. And if you know anything about Rocket Lab, you'll know what I mean. But it's not just the material and the colour that makes a rocket take off. Prime has, and I will quote directly from them, the world's largest 3D printed rocket engine. And again, I refer back to Rocket Lab's plans with their Neutron rocket. Um, who knows if that title will probably change soon but as of the end of January 2022 the world's largest 3D printed rocket engine that title stays with Orbex however as you can see in the photo this will be a single piece engine so it'll have no welds or joins which can fail in flight so what will power this 3D printed marvel Orbex has partnered with Calor. Yeah, the gas people. Calor will be supplying their bio LPG fuel to Orbex as well as tanks and relevant infrastructure to the Orbex test site near Kinloss in Murray as well as Space Hub Sutherland eventually. Now, I don't know if that contract also includes the maintenance and upkeep of the infrastructure and tanks I assume so, but that's not officially been said by either party. Now, the bio LPG is a bit, it's unique. Um, they claim that it's much cleaner than normal RP-1 rocket fuel. And Orbex claim, and I'll read this out because it's quite lengthy. Orbex claim that a recent study by the University of Exeter found that a single Orbex Prime launch would produce up to 96% lower emissions than a similar sized launch vehicle powered by fossil fuels. Okay, um, I want to see the figures on that, but if it's true, 96% less emissions is, is brilliant, um, especially since the type of satellites that Prime will be launching not always, but the majority of them will be for climate monitoring, earth monitoring. Um, so this goes a long way to helping that 
that mission be achieved. Now, let's move over to Skyrora. The first thing when visiting Skyrora's website is the beauty of it. It's amazing and interactive and it has all the info and pictures that you want. And the link to it and to the Orbex website are in the description below, so go and have a read. Skyrora say they are headquartered in Edinburgh and with facilities across Europe. Skyrora is developing launch vehicle technology to ensure that the life-changing benefits of space are realised here on Earth. Wow, okay, that's a pretty short but bold statement. The website also goes on to say the mission of Skyrora is to realise the tangible benefits of responsive access to and responsible exploitation of space for the increased well-being of life on Earth. Okay, again, very bold, but for Skyrora, this is doable. Skyrora has a good section about their values as a company. Skyrora places education and sustainability as the heart of their core values. These values cover the environment and community, which interests me greatly. They mention that they promote employee volunteering through STEM activities. This brings me on nicely to my own mission for this year, and that is raising donations for our friends over at Thompson STEM Engagement. Thompson STEM Engagement were chosen by a Twitter poll to be the first charity to benefit from my Nessie STEM Challenge. Links to Thompson's STEM engagement are below and any donation you can make to them via the page will be hugely beneficial to the young people that they educate. Back to Skyrora's values, which show they too are developing with the environment in mind. What's interesting to notice here is their statement about Ecosine. And Ecosine is a version of RP1 and other fuels made from recycled plastics by Skyborough themselves. So on one hand we have Orbex saying that RP1 is bad and they're just going to use bio LPG supplied by colour. And the other hand we have Skyrora saying we're using RP1 but our own version that we've designed and produced ourselves in house. Although it's with recycled plastics. Who do I think is right or wrong? I'll let you know at the end of the video. Also on the Skyroader website to pay attention to, I'm not going to mention names here as there's quite a list, but the advisory board and top tier of Skyroader includes a Lord, a Baroness and a well-known British astronaut. They also include some very, very talented people and I hope to get the chance to interview one or two of them in the coming months. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on those videos. Okay, I hear you, Dave. There's a lot of information on the website about the company. What about the rocket? Okay, right, fair enough. The website actually lists seven vehicles as they call them. Five of them are rockets, two of them are actually stages, but some of them have existed and flown from Iceland was their main mission. Uh, but the one that we're interested in, the one that's been developed now and will be likely the or one of the final products is called Skyrora XL. And it's a fabulous three stage rocket. And those of you that are eagle eyed will notice that just above me there's a drawing off on the wall. I'm not being biased towards them, that was just a gift. Let's learn about Skyrora XL. Skyrora say that one of the key design criteria of Skyrora XL is the unification of the launch vehicle's main systems, assemblies, and units. This can provide a reduction in time and costs for design and testing processes and increased reliability of the launch vehicle. Okay, that's a bit of a tongue twister. From what I've gleaned from 
the website, it appears to me, in my interpretation, that the fairing section at the top and the third stage will be a sealed unit with the payload already inside. So the tank section can be tested um, or even swapped out and the fairing can be added on top of the third stage. That's my interpretation from it. I'm pretty sure I'm right, but we'll see as we go along. It, there is some discrepancies on the website as well. Some of the images show that Skyrora XL will be 24 meters in length, and then just one click away, you get an image saying it'll be 22.7 meters in length. So we don't really know the exact figures of it. I'm leaning more towards 22.7 meters because it just seems to be a more accurate figure but we'll see so where we're going to see it and when it's due to launch late 2022 from Saxavord spaceport in Shetland so who's my favorite what do I think about them okay let's go over that I don't actually see Orbex and Skyrora as direct competitors um, they have the pros and cons to each of them and I'm sure they'll attract a different class of customer. Um, Orbex obviously have their own mission specs for Space Lab Sutherland and Skyrora also will go to Saxavord spaceport in Shetland. They will both do polar and sun synchronous orbits so I, they're similar, but I believe that they'll attract a different client, whether that be corporations may use Skyrora in Shetland, but universities or um, research will use Orbex to launch from Sutherland. Completely my assumptions, I could be reversed or completely wrong, but that is my opinion. Do I have a favourite? Orbex are building their rockets really close to me, within, you know, just over half an hour drive away. They're also launching from Space Up Sutherland, which is also on the mainland and is a two hour drive from me. So I will be there more often to take photos and live stream. However, Skyrora seem to be, as a company, more open about what they're doing. They're showing off their product more, or their development more. Orbex are very kind of close and, and secure. I'm not saying that's wrong, but I'm just saying that I appreciate the openness that Skyrora are doing. Skyrora really have a big merchandise store as well. You can buy t-shirts and hats, and I've got some pins and and uh, launch keys and stuff like that so Skyrora seem to be more marketing and getting the attention than Orbex now Orbex are according to the website launching a merch store soon so we'll see so I think at the moment I'm going to cheat here Orbex Prime being my favourite Rocket, but Skyrora being my favourite rocket company out of the Scottish based ones. That covers all, all angles, I think. About the fuel, we don't know much about either. We know what Calor say about their bio LPG, but that's their product, so they are going to say that because they want to promote it and sell it. Skyrora are obviously promoting their eco-scene fuel which I suppose they're they're trying to get out that they're recycling plastic a lot. We'll see. I want to know what the performance numbers are for both those fuel types but again that depends on the engine so you know the engines will be finely tuned to their own fuel so Let's just wait and see, basically. 
if you think I'm wrong, add it in the comments below. And please like and share, and I will keep you all updated on what comes next.